Good afternoon. So I want to talk about how blessed we are in this macro world of looking back to 1215. And events take place throughout life. And in particular in France, we had Louis Pasteur. And Louis Pasteur is so significant that there has been no breakthrough in healthcare where the age of human beings doubled. He basically took the average age from 35 to 70, and no invention has gone from 70 to 140. So there are events in life, like Gutenberg with inventing the printing press, and within 100 years, literacy explodes, and so does religious transformation take place with the Protestant movement. There's events like Bitcoin, which we're all here today, and we are writing that. You are at that incredible moment in time. You're all so busy. Everyone at Hive is very busy. Busy plugging in our machines, building out our HPC, that we have to step back and recognize that we are in a huge transformation, and we are part of that. And so I hope that you will enjoy the thought process of using what's called the complex adaptive system. And you can look it up. You can go to your chat GPT and type in CAS, and it will tell you how you can apply it. And it's how viruses like COVID spread. How does an entrepreneur like Amazon, you can take the CAS model and overlap it on an entrepreneur. It explains, it's a biological model that explains how things evolve and how we come to a conference like this and we network and we get new information and then we walk out and all of a sudden that new information and collectively with new friends that we built that we create something that's brand new. And it's recognizing that happens with corporations. There's, at the time, many setbacks and disappointments in that journey, but the complex adaptive system shows great leaders, great entrepreneurs, great inventors, that they are the ones that spark through and go through all the setbacks and challenges. And anyone that's been in Bitcoin, and Hive has been here since 2017, will recognize all the difficulties and disappointments and the setbacks, but as a collective group, it becomes very powerful. And yes, it's decentralized. And there's always been a battle between centralized and decentralized, between centralized power of abuse to all of a sudden decentralizing, and then it gets too fragmented, and you get someone that brings it all back together in a centralization. But I want to view it with the CSA model. But before I get into that, I want to talk about the DNA of volatility. Every asset class has its own unique DNA, its fingerprint of volatility. And what this says here is using statistical analysis is that it's one standard deviation and that 70% of the time it is a non-event for gold in the stock market to go up or down 1%. But when it comes to Bitcoin, it's 2%. But over 10 days, it's 7%. And when you, are in, when you take a look at other companies like Tesla, it's 13%. MicroStrategy is 16% over 10 days. And Hive is 25%. Because we are much further along in that early adoption. Hive was the first crypto mining company in the world to go public. Hive had a very focused approach to what it was doing. And now we're doing the same in AI. So we're listed in NASDAQ, we're listed in Germany, we're listed in Canada. And in that journey, we're mining in 100 miles south of the Arctic Circle in Boden, in Sweden. And we've given back to the community in building out and helping the hockey arena and sponsoring kids' teams, 12 teams. So over here, on one hand, we are in the digital transformation, but we're giving back to the community. It's something that, that resonates importantly in this community. And we were the first to take a building of about 40,000 square feet and take that molecule of electricity to mine Bitcoin and recycle it to heat a building five times bigger. So not only do we use green energy, hydroelectricity, but we've been innovating of how you keep recycling that molecule. 
So we are focused on green. We were the first, as I said, to go public mining and buying a data center. It was in Iceland, and then we went to Sweden, and then Canada. The team is here. Uh, our CFO is here. Our CEO, Aiden, is here. Uh, President of Sweden, Johanna, I see him right in front of me. Uh, we have also Gabe. Gabe is over here. Uh, so you can come and meet some of the team. And also our directors. We had a, our independent directors are here. We had a board meeting yesterday. What a perfect venue to have it in and discuss where we're going in the future. So Susan McGee, Marcus New, and Dave Perel are somewhere in the audience here. So I thank them all for coming, and I thank all of you for coming and listening to our story. This is what we're most proud of. Uh, it is all the first we've done. Now, when it comes to looking at truth, Truth has three perspectives, and I'm a big believer as a quant fund manager that you, it's, everything's about an arbitrage of information and opinions, and you just cannot take one fact. You have to take it from different perspectives to basically get down to truth. So this is a picture from the top of the Eiffel Tower, and I'm going to try, as I start at the beginning, viewing historical events through the lens of the complex adaptive system. This complex adaptive system is a network of interconnected components that exhibit emergent behavior. That is, we collectively become together and we become a new force. Maybe it's a new religion. Maybe it's a new corporation. Maybe it's a new political party. But it emerges from a collective idealism of similar beliefs and values. And it's recognizing that Bitcoin is part of that. And same thing happened when we go back in history and we look at the Magna Carta. So the four pillars of the caste model are agents, which are people in this room, the interactions that we have with each other at the conference, and then how do we adapt? And how do we adopt and adapt to new changes in the marketplace that deal from regulatory pronouncements? I heard many regulatory uh, thoughts here earlier today. How do we adapt to it? And then we emerge as a significant group. And you are all part of this significant group. You are, to me, as significant as when Gutenberg was inventing the printing press, when Louis Pasteur was inventing the vaccine. It, it, we are part of a great digital transformation change. And this big idea back in history of decentralization is, when, is in 1215 with the signing of the Magna Carta, that the king had too much power. And what did it say? No free man will be seized or disposed of his property or harmed except by the law of the land and rule of law. And this evolved to have common law. And this evolved to have patent law. So it's interesting to watch the evolution. Something emerges from all of a sudden a discovery, a spark of too much tension. And then we have in this chronological history, we have Joan of Arc who's a champion at the age of 17. And I, and I share with you is that she creates change at 17 years old of showing tremendous leadership of holding together. And all of that comes an emergence. And then in the U.S., we have Ben Franklin. In this world, nothing is certain but death and taxes. And always a man of levity and humor, but who spent a lot of time in Paris. And then we have George Washington, freedom and property rights, the correlation of the Magna Carta to creating property rights was the stepping stone to human rights. And in modern century, in the past hundred years, any country that has taken away property rights, like Cuba, like Venezuela, has seen human rights taken away. So there is a very strong correlation of property rights with human rights and they do exist uh, connected. And when you separate them, you get disasters. And Thomas Jefferson, who believed in state power to balance against federal power, is decentralized versus centralized. So the whole idea of having a conflict, a triangle, there's a hero, there's a villain, and there's a victim. If you do not have this triangle, you do not have a conflict. So who is the hero? Is it Napoleon? Is it Bitcoin? Who's the villain? Is for us in the Bitcoin ecosystem, it's the banks. 
It's central banking. It's controlling everything. And who's, who are the victim? Society, citizens, and having your private property rights being removed from you and your ability to move around the world. And so we go in through this journey and we recognize that there is always this conflict and we can take a look at the U.S. of the balance of power. It's very binary between monetary and fiscal policy. And we can look at this argument of centralized versus decentralized. Bitcoin is decentralized. Gold is decentralized. And so is art. But paper money is all centralized. And this beautiful piece of art is to recognize that Bitcoin is part of what they call the alternative asset class. It is decentralized. It is the same as to me in many ways as gold. And it's better than gold for many reasons. So it's just recognizing that this evolution is taking place by taking the caste model and overlooking over history. As we can see, common law, private property, capitalism, and decentralized money are related to civil law, state property, communism, and central money control. There is a balancing between going back and forth, and, and this pendulum will swing back and forth. So I believe that everyone in this room has been involved in the Bitcoin ecosystem. And it's so important to recognize that no central power, no central corporation has built it. It's we the people, for the people, have built something that's very significant. And the next big evolution or revolution, like electricity changed in the Industrial Revolution, is going to be AI.